All right, let's get started with 12.3. We're going to do determinants to solve systems of linear equations. So in the past, we've learned how to solve systems using elimination. We've used substitution. We've used graphing. And so this is going to be the fourth way using determinants. So what is a determinant? If the slide would move ahead, we could find that out. There we go. Let's start by evaluating two by two determinants. OK, so if you have a uh, matrix that's a two by two, the determinant is going to be a times d, you're going to multiply down, minus b times c, you're going to multiply up. So multiply down, minus multiply up. All right, so here it is and once more. Let's give this a shot. So multiply down, negative 2 times negative 1. And then we're going to minus 4 times 3 multiplying back up. So negative 2 times negative 1 is 2, minus 4 times 3 is 12, and so 2 minus 12 is 10. It's just that easy for 2 by 2 determinants. 3 by 3s are going to be a little trickier, but for 2 by 2s, it's just multiply down, minus multiply up. Try problem 7, which is right there. All right, let's use Kramer's rule to solve a system of two equations containing two variables. So here's Kramer's rule. If you have a system AX plus BY equals S, where A, B, and S are constants, and the second system is CX plus DY equals T, where C, D, and T are constants, the value of X will be the determinant of S, T. So we're going to take the solution answers, the solution numbers here, S and T, and swap them in to our first column of our matrix and then keep the y coefficients over the determinant of the x and y coefficients AC and BD. Y is the exact same thing. The bottom matrix is the coefficients of x and y AC and BD and then the top matrix you replace the y variable constants with the S and T, right? the constants out by themselves. All right. And, of course, your denominator cannot be zero. So let's give this a shot here. Let's see it one more time. So let's use Kramer's rule to solve this system. So I'm going to write this out for D. So D is just my coefficients, 3 and 5, and negative 6 and 4. Then I'm going to write DX. So DX, we're going to keep the Y variable uh, constants, negative 6 and 4. But then we're going to swap in the 24 and the 12 for the x constants. All right, let's do the same thing for y. We'll keep the x constants, 3 and 5, the coefficients. And then we're going to swap in the 24 and the 12 for the y coefficients. All right, and then we're going to find the determinants. So this is going to be 12 minus negative 30, which is 42. This is going to be 24 times 4 is 80 plus 16 is 96 minus negative 72, which is 168. And then finally, this is 36 minus 120, which is negative 84. All right, so what is x and what is y? x is going to be dx over d which is 168 over 42, which is 4. y is dy over d. dy was negative 84. d was 42 again. So y is negative 2. All right, and you've got your answers. You can try problem 15. Give 15 a shot, which is right there. OK, so now let's get a little more complicated here. 3 by 3 determinants. All right, so we're going to bring in uh, three steps here. To do a 3 by 3, we're actually going to do three 2 by 2s here. All right, so we're going to do A11, which is whatever this number is, times this matrix, A22, A23, A32, and A33, minus A12, A12, Okay, and then we're going to put in the matrix all of the numbers that aren't in the same column or the same row. So A12, A12, we'll keep the 2131, you'll see that here. We'll keep the 2333, you'll see that here. 
All right. And then if we use to finish out the row, A13, we're going to keep all of the other numbers in the matrix that aren't in the same column or in the same row. So 21, 22, 31, and 32. You see that here. All right. Now, how do we figure out if this is a minus or a plus? It's going to be negative 1 to the I plus J, meaning that if these two numbers here are odd, it's going to be negative. That's how you can remember it. All right. So if 2 plus 1 is odd, you're going to multiply your answer times negative 1. 3 plus 2 is odd, you're going to multiply by negative 1. So let's give this a shot. So first we're just going to find the pieces here, finding the minors. That's what each piece is called, the minor of M21. So 2, 1, that's this number. So we're going to keep every number that is not in the same row or column. All right, so negative 1, 6, 3, and negative 9. All right, you'll see here we're going to cross out those numbers and keep the rest. We need to multiply it by whatever the number is in front, in this case negative 2. And do we times by negative 1? In this case, yes, we do, because what's 2 plus 1? It's an odd number. We're going to times by negative 1 out front. All right, so we've got 2 times... Now we'll do the determinant. Negative 1 times negative 9 is 9, minus 3 times 6 is 18. 2 times negative 9 is negative 18. All right, so that's the minor 2, 1. Let's do the minor 3, 2. Clean up this matrix so we can see it again. All right, so third row, second column is here. So we're going to cross out everything that's in the same row and column and see what's left. So. This 3 plus 2 is odd, so we'll have a negative 1 out front. M3, 2, start with the 6, and then what's the remaining matrix? 2, negative 2, 3, and 1. And so we'll have negative 6 times 2 minus negative 6. So negative 6 times 8, which is negative 48. And so that would be the minor 3, 2. Okay, so we're going to need that those pieces to do a 3 by 3 determinant. Oh, apologize. Computer's freaking out. Come on back to me, computer. There we go. All right, so let's find the value of this 3 by 3 determinant. All right, so we're going to do the minors of the first row. So we're going to start with the 1. So this is going to be M, first row, first column, plus M, uh, still first row, sorry. First row, second column, plus M, first row, third column. So this is the only one. 1 plus 2 is odd. So this will end up being a minus out in front because it'll be a negative 1. All right, so what's M11? One, one? We're going to say 1. What's left? 5, 6, 1, and 7, plus negative 1 times 2, 3, 2, 1, 7 plus 1, 3, 2, 5, 6. All right, take a second and look at those numbers if you need to, but those should be the right numbers. So we'll have 1, 35 minus 6, minus 2, 21 minus 2, plus 1, 18 minus 10, Let's see what we got here. This is 29 minus 2 times 19 plus 8. And so we'll have 20 mi 29 minus 38 plus 8. And so this is negative 1 plus, I'm sorry, negative 1, negative 9 plus 8, which the final answer is negative 1. Got ahead of myself there. All right, pause that. Take a look at that if you need to. If you feel good with that, try problem 11. All right, so now there's a Kramer's rule for 3 by 3s as well. And so it's dx over d for x again, dy over d for y again, and dz over d for z again. You're going to rewrite each matrix. So you should have three, uh, 3 by 3 matrix plus the original d. So you'll end up with four 3 by 3 matrices. Notice again that the x coefficient column gets replaced by the solution column. For y, same thing, and for z, same thing. All right, so we can do this by hand and work out all the determinants and divide them. I'm going to show you how we do this using the K. 
calculator. So first things first, I'm going to write out what all the determinants are, just so we have them written down. So this is just all the coefficients. 1, 2, 1, 3, 5, 1, and 2, 6, 7. And then dx would be the exact same thing, but we'll replace the first column, 1, 3, 2, with 1, 3, 1, right? The solution column. Everything else stays the same, 2, 5, 6, 1, 1, 7. And let's see, we've got dy. Everything stays the same, 1, 3, 2, 1, 1, 7. But the middle column becomes 1, 3, 1. And then dz will be, everything stays the same, 1, 2, 3, 5, 2, 6. But then the last column becomes our 1, 3, 1. All right, so we can do this by hand, come up with a whole bunch of minors, figure the whole thing all the way through, which sometimes could be faster, but let me show you how to do it on the calculator. So I'm going to go into the matrix column, uh, matrix menu, and we'll get three of these. So this is going to be a three by three, and it'll be one, two, one, three, five, one, two, six, seven. All right, that's our first matrix. So we'll take a second and punch in all of them. B will do dx. This is a 3 by 3. 1, 2, 1, 3, 5, 1, 1, 6, 7. Second matrix. Let's go ahead and make matrix C our dy. 1, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 2, 1, 7. And then our last matrix D will be dz. 3 by 3, 1, 2, 1, 3, 5, 3, 2, 6, and 1. All right, so they're all in there. I'm going to come back to our uh, main screen here and find the determinants of all of these. So second matrix, math. Here's where we can do the calculations. Determinant of a is negative 1. Determinant of B, 2, I'm going to keep going, determinant of C is negative 2, and lastly the determinant of matrix D is 1. All right, so we've got negative 1, actually let me put them up next to them. This is negative 1, this was 2, this was negative 2, and this was 1. Let's come back so we can see the whole screen. All right, so what is x? x is going to be dx over d, negative 2. What is y going to be? It's dy, negative 2, over d, positive 2. And what is z? 1 over d, negative 1. So our solution would be negative 2 for x. 2 for y, negative 1 for z. All right, problem 33 is yours to try. See if you can do it using the calculator. OK, so a couple things here. If d is 0, your uh, answer is either inconsistent or dependent. Your uh, system of equations is either inconsistent or dependent. If any of dx, dy, or dz is not 0, then we're inconsistent. If all of your determinants, d, dx, dy, and dz, are all 0, then the system is consistent. We're dependent. So you need to go back and remember how we do dependent 3 by 3s using the row reduction, elimination, or substitution. All right, write that down. Have it in your notes so you can refer back to it. Let's move on. No more problems to try, just a couple properties to know. If the value of a determinant changes signs, if it does change signs, if any two rows swap. So if you have 3, 4, 1, 2, your determinant's 2. If you swap them, so 1, 2 is on top and 3, 4 is below it, now our determinant is negative 2. If you have all zeros in a row, the determinant is 0. If any two rows have corresponding entries, the determinant is also 0. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, same exact thing in two rows, your determinant is going to be 0. All right. If any row of a or any column of a determinant is multiplied by a non-zero number k, the value of the determinant is also changed by the factor of k. So 1, 2, 4, 6, that's negative 2. 
if we take the one row and make it 1k and 2k times by k, your answer is k negative 2, so negative 2k. Right? So we can pull that k out front of any row or any column. Okay? That might be useful in the future. Have that done in your notes. And last one, if the entry of any row or any column of a determinant, uh, if the entries of any row are multiplied by a non-zero number k, and the result is added to the corresponding entries of another row or column, the value of the determinant remains unchanged. All right, so we're going to multiply row 2 by negative 2. Okay, so that's going to be 10, and that's going to be, uh, sorry, negative 10 and negative 4. If we added that to the top here, okay, so negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. Okay, then your matrix remains unchanged. We don't see this a whole lot, but it's good to have in your notes. All right, so make sure you have all those properties in your notes. If you need to back up the slides and write them down, do so. Otherwise, you're done. Any questions, make sure we get them asked in class, and good luck with all those problems.